The exposure I was looking for in Plasto Station I found in the Nation family 10 years down the line. Young men who were really united beyond the nice cars, money, fancy clothes. The cars got nicer, with BMWs becoming Bentleys, Porsches upgrading to Lamborghinis and Range Rovers becoming Rolls Royces that all happened to be white. The Sons would host private parties at Louis Vuitton showroom and meetings would take place in the finest restaurants in the city, from Scots to Sexy Fish. The fashion show had now become the pews on a Sunday morning, with the ushers directing people to their seats in Azadadine Alaya and the choir in coordinated Louis Vuittons. I never really asked many questions, but I noticed every time we'd meet up to go through the numbers, he'd have scratches on his face, neck and head. One day over a quiet lunch, he broke down in tears and told me he was, going, he was being abused by his soon-to-be ex-wife. They'd been going through divorce proceedings for almost two years, but she wouldn't settle on a fair figure, so it just dragged and the relationship became abusive. She had seen he had taken an interest in investing in a certain startup whilst they were in dispute over their financial settlement. As they had not been married long and had no children, he told me his lawyers advised him the judge would award her very little. The courtroom brought me back to 2012, where I first faced extradition to Spain. I had taken the trip to LA and upon arrival, the immigration officer had looked at me puzzled. He was concerned. What he was reading couldn't match up to what he was seeing. A big mama looking like police officer approached me. You're so beautiful and so damn stupid at the same time. Can't you tell whoever's sending you is using you? She yelled in her American accent. Em, stop. They have guns, Mariam. Stacy's panic-stricken voice was almost overtaking the police sirens and speeding Ferraris filled with laughing Essex boys in shorts shorter than mine. The pain in her voice made me contemplate deeply for about 60 seconds. But it didn't take me long to decide it was either me or her. As I began to lose my breath wondering which way to turn, all selfishness rose up inside me. I've been to jail. I've been to prison abroad. Her parents were rich anyway. They spoke English fluently for a start. They would figure out the Spanish canteen system in a flash. Marimabula, you are disgusting. Your record is despicable. You have not changed from the age of 14 and now at 23 you're still causing us issues. The judge didn't even allow me to introduce myself. He just continued to hurl what I thought was abuse at me. I watched as he, as he increasingly turned red like a boiling tomato whilst flicking through my list of convictions. Nobody has ever spoken to me like that, especially not an old white coffin knocker that I was hoping would die before he issued my sentence. The nasty episode lasted about 60 seconds and before I could turn around and wave at my family, I was aggressively pushed back into the holding cells. I could still hear my sister screaming and crying for me. She had become my mother and she wasn't going to stop until she fixed this.